Welcome back to another Torch Review. I thought I'd uh, get the imminent DN35 in for review because this was on a special deal a few weeks ago. Uh, so I asked Gearbest if they could send it in to me for a review just to see what I thought of it. So we're going to get straight into it, just have a look at the torch. The first thing you notice about this is just how small it is. It really is a very tiny torch. Compare it to a 26650 cell, which is what powers the torch. It's um, really about as compact as you could imagine for a torch of this design. Onto the user interface, it's actually quite straightforward. You have the two button design here. Left button, if it's um, on or off a quick press, will show you the voltage display will come up. That's not particularly accurate though, that's the only thing. Now if you push and hold, you get momentary on to the turbo, and if you hold it in for about three seconds, it will maintain the turbo power level. So they split the turbo onto that, and you have the single press for on, and then a press again to cycle through the three power levels on the main power switch. And they have a memory for those as well. It works pretty well for me. They've separated the turbo off. That's okay. Don't have a problem with that. You can also use the momentary anytime you want, even in the strobe mode for the turbo. You also see on the OLED display that it does come up with the lumens output. It's quite a decent little display. It's perhaps not an essential thing. I might have made better use of the uh, OLED display myself in a few areas. So after you've got used to the dual button design, it's actually okay. If you want to get into the strobe mode, you just double press. And then double press again to cycle through the three strobe modes. And at any time you can go back into the turbo mode by pressing the left hand button. So it's a pretty decent interface for a dual button. Now on this we have a smooth reflector. It's actually quite deep um, for its size. So we're expecting quite a bit of throw off of this torch. And go around the other side, we have the micro USB port cover. Now I did read some reviews online saying that this can come out by accident but I gave it a fairly decent tug. It doesn't seem to so perhaps they've changed the design. It stays in place quite well. And then unscrew the uh, stem section from the head. You'll see that's already greased up with silicone grease and there's your 26650 sill. At the top point we have the contacts. They've rated this to 4500 milliamp hours and um, this is a protected cell as well. We'll do a battery test on this later on flat on the bottom so it will uh, base a tail stand quite nicely but you'll notice there's nowhere to attach a wrist strap uh, that's an oversight in my opinion a very simple thing to add but they haven't done um, the knurling on the grip might mean it be able to uh, attach that to the main body back onto the switches again shame about the voltage display being off the cell is about 4.15 volts um, in this particular torch, so it's not going to be that useful really. I'm not sure why that is. I can understand it if it's on when it's off, the voltage is still off. I personally would have changed the design on the switches because they're actually um, quite flush with the body, just slightly proud. They're really not easy to find with or without gloves. With gloves, you're going to have no chance of finding them. Um, without gloves, you'll probably find the micro USB port and try and press that. So that's something could be improved definitely. A quick scan over the box just to see some of the specs. Notice the very high candela, 88,900, so concentrated beam pattern. You also get the included spare O-rings and micro USB charging cable. This is the nylon holster that's included. You have uh, a decent quality on this. You also have the elasticated size D-ring on the back, quite a big one, and the Velcro closing, the belt loop. Put the torch in. Would have probably made it a little bit longer, but it does hold fairly securely. The flap at the front, just a touch longer, that would have been perfect, but that's okay. It's decent enough little holster. And we'll have a quick look through the user manual. You'll see this fairly big jump between the low and the medium on this torch. So perhaps would have done a bit more work on the spacing. And this just covers the user operation and some of the features. So you can go through and pause that if you want. I like to show the manual because some people want to have a look through that and uh, see what it says in case I've missed anything myself. I'm pretty much okay with the user interface, just really the switch design, which I would have changed a bit. They could have perhaps uh, raised up the casing around the switch. There's no chance of them being accidentally pressed because they require quite a lot of pressure to turn it on. So that's not a concern at all. There's no lockout and you probably don't really need one, but I would have just adjusted that myself to have made it a bit easier to find the switches. Underwater tests, no problems at all. Wouldn't expect to find any issues. 
and this is the charging speed just over an amp so I was hoping to get up to maybe two amps or one and a half amps it's going to take a while to charge this in torch and this is the low battery indicator that flashes up so there's still some use to the OLED display onto the capacity of the battery they've actually um, not done themselves any favors with the label capacity because it's over 5000 which is pretty much in line with the other batteries I've tested going through the power levels now on the imminent you'll see that big jump from the low to medium notice the concentrated beam in the middle that hot spot's going to get even hotter as we go up through the power levels and that's exactly what you'd expect from a smooth reflector um, that's quite deep with high intensity in the middle so it's really got quite a nice range on it and onto the Olight M2R Warrior just to show you a torch which is completely different which has a much more dispersed even beam pattern so these two have nothing in common they're um, for different tasks really so you can decide for yourself which one's more suitable for you what type of beam pattern what I'll do now is run through my usual beam shots and then we'll come back with a few thoughts at the end
thoughts with the Imlet. You'll notice there that there's a drop down to 900. You get maybe five, six minutes, perhaps slightly longer in really cold weather before it drops down. So that's not bad at all considering the size. You probably get less in the summertime and hot weather conditions. I like the fit and finish of the torch. It's very well made, feels very solid, a nice fit in the hand as well. But there are some obvious grumbles that I do have. The switch design, which I've already covered, voltage display, lack of a uh, place to put the hand strap. Those are points as well that should be noted and perhaps could be quicker on the charging speed. So really this comes down to, if it's on sale, I'll give this a yes, a thumbs up. If it's not on sale, I'd probably pass on it. So do pay attention to the price on this because that does have a big influence, I think, on a purchase decision. So quite a nice torch, but Imlent do need to really look at some of their design aspects. And I found that on a few of the other torches as well. Then the switch design being the main one, you just need to be able to find it uh, much easier, particularly as you're gonna use a torch in the dark, that's kind of important. And that's perhaps somewhere they could have done better job but let me know what you think if you've got this talk if you picked it up on a deal leave a comment below and share your thoughts on it and other people can get an impression from that as well and thanks very much for watching the video